Thank you very much for joining me once again, folks. So we should be sat here talking about the India-Pakistan final on Sunday, looking ahead to that final and seeing how well Pakistan are going to do and the challenges they face against India. But that's not happening, is it? Sri Lanka versus India is the final of this year's Asia Cup. And it's um, a pattern, really, in the Asia Cup. India and Pakistan never face off against each other. 16th edition of the tournament, and they've never played against each other in a final. This time, Pakistan should have reached the final, no doubt about it. Where did it go wrong? I think you've got to look at the day before the match. Why announce the team? You know, conditions are interchangeable. The weather's changing all the time. Why do you need to announce your team a day before the match? Are you going to get any extra runs, any extra wickets? Are you going to get any um, bonuses for announcing your team the day before? No, you're not. And then what materialised was that they had to change the starting eleven on the day of the match. Makes no sense to me. I don't know. Maybe Mickey Arthur and Grant Bradburn will have the answers for that as to why they keep doing that. But yeah, there's nothing to gain from it. The toss... So Pakistan decided to bat first. Uh, interesting decision. Babar Azam got a lot of stick for the previous decision um, against India when he won the toss. This time around, I think he got it wrong again. You know, it, it, in those conditions, you knew that batting second, you know what the target would be and the ball would be coming onto the bat nicer, which it did for the Sri Lankans. You know, you could hit through the line a lot better as their batters did. And uh, that would have been, I think, the, the best bet for Barbara Azam. You know, you can't blame him. He's probably made that decision alongside some senior players, the coaching staff. So somewhere along the line, somebody's got that call wrong again. Um, let's see. Who will start again for Pakistan? You know, the opening partnerships, whoever it is, mainly Fakhar Zaman and Imam al -Haq, Um, they've been struggling of late to, uh, to even get to 50. You know, it's been a number of games where they haven't reached 50 runs for an opening stand. And Pakistan are a team where if they get off to a good start, I think that helps them, that boosts their confidence. And uh, once again, we saw this time around, it was uh, Abdullah Shafiq and Fakhar Zaman. Uh, once again, Fakhar Zaman departed. Um, the batting order for Pakistan makes for interesting reading, doesn't it? Do they know what their... Best 11 is, do they know the batting order? Who should be coming in at three? Who should be four? Obviously, we know that Barbara Azam likes that number three spot, so that's fixed for him. But then they bring in Muhammad Harris, select him. We know that he's somebody who at the top of the order, you know, with that new white ball coming onto the bat, he can hit through the line, over the top, unsettle the opening bowlers, put pressure on the opposition team. Opposition captain, um, you know, they have to resort to other plans against this type of player. But what do they do? They keep sending him in one day internationals in the middle order. What's the point of that? Again, mystifying. Can somebody answer that for me? You know, who's making these decisions? Who's who's sorting out the batting order? Because at the moment, Pakistan just seem all at sea regarding their batting. Um, it was a rescue act by Mohammad Rizwan and Iftikhar Ahmed who, you know, they, they, they did well in those last 10 overs, especially. They scored more than 100 runs. They gave Pakistan a fighting chance of victory. But, you know, a lot of the damage was done earlier in that Pakistan innings. Once again, methodical approach. We're seeing the likes of South Africa, Australia, England, even New Zealand as well, smashing bowlers, smashing bowling attacks all around the park. Pakistan seemed to be happy with a runner ball through those middle overs, Run a ball at the start. Oh, if we get 300, it's brilliant. Teams are scoring 400 in one day nationals these days, man. You know, 300 isn't enough. 300 is a big score for Pakistan in an ODI, but look around the world. Teams, 300 is nothing. A run a ball is absolutely nothing. So this whole approach of aggression and wanting to put the opposition under pressure, it's all talk. We're not doing it often enough. You know, every now and then Pakistan will get a big score, but more, more often than not, that they're not doing it with the bat. And this is a big problem uh, going into the, the World Cup. So what have we got then? Pakistan's bowling. 
you know, they lost on that very last ball, which we all know. Small margins, they make all the difference in these sort of matches. Those little things, you know, that was one catch that he dropped. That was just so straightforward for a wicket keeper. You know, I'm not a wicket keeper, I never have been. So, you know, it'd be a little bit unfair for me to overly criticise Rizwan, but a professional wicket keeper should be taking that sort of catch straightforward. And, um, you know, that could have been the turning point in the match. And then overthrows and misfields. I mean, a number of overthrows where you don't need to throw the ball. It's it's just throw it into the keeper or the or the bowler. You don't need to attempt the run out and then you're giving uh, overthrows away, a couple of runs here, a couple of runs there. They mount up, misfields. 20, 25 runs Pakistan gave away in the field. Simply not good enough. Makes a difference. Other teams are saving runs in the field. We're giving runs away. This is another area of their cricket that needs to improve. Um, Barbara Azam's captaincy, you know, I hate criticising the guy because I think he's a wonderful batter and I've got a lot of admiration for him, a lot of respect for him. And, um, you know, he's he's obviously a very amicable guy. He's, he's got a big fan following. But I won't hold back with criticism where criticism is, I think, constructive for any player, not just Barbara Azam. It doesn't matter who it is. Just thought his captaincy. Um, there was a number of mistakes that he made. Nine overs for Shadab Khan. Why give him nine overs? Why only two overs at the end for Zaman Khan when we know that Zaman Khan is the sort of bowler who relishes that ball in his hand when it's reversing at the end of an innings? You know, give him three, even four overs on the trot at the end of that innings. And, um, you know, he, he didn't even finish his quarter of overs. Going back to Shadab Khan, though, you know, I don't get the, the need for him to bowl nine overs. Um, Shadab, again, a great guy. You all know that I recently interviewed him, met him. And, you know, he, he's, he's such a charming, such a lovely guy. But again, what's happened to his bowling? Every over or almost every over, he's bowling a long hop or a full toss. Look, you need to get back to playing first-class cricket. He's not played first-class cricket for three years, more than three years. You, you, you're going to play in T20 leagues. You're going to play the odd ODI here and there. Yep, you make a lot of money, which is great. But your technique suffers. You're bowling to batters who are wanting to attack you. They become easy wickets. You know, bowlers... Um, pick up these easy wickets and then they forget how to work batters out, how to sort out the varieties, how to, you know, get inside the head of a batsman and work him over and then get him out. T20 cricket, I'm afraid a lot of spinners especially pick up soft wickets. And I'm not anti-spinners, but I think in my in my opinion, spinners pick up a lot of cheap wickets and their technique suffers. Shadab Khan, get back to playing one uh, first-class cricket. Uh, you said to me that you wanted to play first-class cricket, so let's see you back playing first-class cricket. Maybe have a word with the father-in-law also and see what advice he's, he offers in terms of playing first-class cricket. Um, what else have we got? So, um, yes, I mean, Zaman Khan, only two overs at the end there. Mohamed Wasim only got three overs in the whole innings. You bring a young pace bowler who's low on confidence, you bring him back into the team as one of your spearheads. You've got two of your bowlers, Harris Rauf and Nassim Shah, your pace bowlers injured. You bring back Mohamed Nassim. How many overs do you give him? Three overs. Three overs. Why three overs only? Yep, the guy was struggling a little bit at the start of the innings, but he's somebody who, again, when the ball is reversing, you know, he's He's good at the end of the innings. Give him a couple of overs in those middle overs. Middle overs. Don't get me started on Pakistan and the middle overs with the ball, especially. Picking up no wickets. The Sri Lankans must have thought, man, this is our birthdays. These are gifts. We're easily taking. They, they needed a runner ball. There you go, gentlemen. Runner ball. Six, seven, eight runs and over. No problem at all. One over, they keep it tight, couple of runs, and the next over, 10, 11 runs. Easy as you like, no problem at all. No pressure on them. And gifts bowling, really. 
the batters are there just comfortably manoeuvring the field, manoeuvring the, the ball around the field, picking up easy runs, simply not good enough. Need some pressure in those middle overs, need wickets. Mohamed Nawaz, again, another lovely guy, but, you know, 10 overs for 50 runs, 10 overs, no wickets for 45 runs. They are not going to hurt the opposition. 10 overs, one for 60. Those aren't figures that are going to hurt the opposition. You need three, four, five wickets. You need wickets in those middle overs from the likes of Mohamed Nawaz. Otherwise, what are you playing them for? Are, you know, are all of your bowlers in those middle overs going to be defensive bowlers? If they are, then the opposition is just going to wait. Yeah, let's see uh, See off Shaheen Shah, be the see off uh, Naseem Shah. And then we know it's going to be nice and gentle for those 10, 15 overs in the middle where we can easily pick up 100 runs, 80 runs, 90 runs, not without any pressure at all. Tactics were confusing uh, throughout the tournament in the Asia Cup. I just thought... There are more questions about Pakistan's ODI team now than there were going into the Asia Cup. Asia Cup, Pakistan were regarded amongst the favourites. Most people thought it would be India-Pakistan final. They went into the tournament with a good run of form. They looked a confident side, fairly settled. And now, after crashing out of the Asia Cup, which is embarrassing, really, the batting order is confused now, you know, the batting order, the, the starting eleven. you've got injury problems, you've got tactical issues, you've got question marks over the captain. So there are a number of question marks, more questions than answers about this Pakistan one-day team. That's not good enough. We should have a settled team going into this World Cup. We haven't. We should have tactically a captain who is aware of his team's strengths and weaknesses. Don't think we've got that. We should have a batting order, you know, give or take one or two places, which is which knows what it's going to do. At this moment in time, there are a number of players who you don't even know if they're going to be in the starting eleven. If so, what number they're going to bat in. And as I said before, the middle overs with the ball are becoming an increasing problem as well. Just one other thing with the bat, and I touched upon it earlier, is we have players who like to accumulate, players who are comfortable in making a century off 100 balls, um, 70, 80 runs, run a ball. These days, a run a ball isn't enough. You know, get out there, challenge the opposition. You know, look at these these guys that Josh Butler, look at the innings that Ben Stokes played the other day. Now, I'm not going, I'm not saying go out there and score 182 runs at a strike rate of nearly 150 because you can't expect the likes of Imam al Haq and Abdullah Shafiq and those guys to do that sort of um, you know, miraculous innings or play that sort of amazing innings. But there's got to be more urgency. You just seem to be in that comfort zone where you are just happy with a runner ball, play singles. Yeah, I'll reach my 50. Yeah, I'll reach my 100. Doesn't matter what the team scores. This attitude has to change. Mickey Arthur said to me, it's team first, ahead of individuals. I'm not convinced by that, so prove me wrong, guys. And, yeah, I mean, injury is part and parcel of cricket, but you've got to question the question the workloads of some of these guys. I mean, we're seeing the same players putting their names up for T20 leagues around the world, and then we wonder why they get injured, especially fast bowlers. I think the PCB need to look at this as a, an issue, as a problem. You can't stop players from making money. You can't stop players from wanting to sign up to these lucrative T20 leagues. But I think it's something that Pakistan needs to address. You've got Naseem Shah who could miss the World Cup. You've got Harris Rauf who's got a uh, an injury as well. Every time Shane Shah really went to stop the ball against Sri Lanka, my heart was in my mouth because I thought, oh my God, if this guy gets injured, that's it. We're finished. So injuries, yep, part and parcel of the game, but I think their workloads need to be managed a lot better. There needs to be more rotation amongst the fast bowlers, especially. I mean, you, you've got Zaman Khan there. He's jumped off the plane and next day he's playing against uh, Sri Lanka. There's got to be better management of, of the, the players. 
Pakistan looking jaded ahead of the World Cup. It's worrying. There's not a lot of cricket now to be played before the World Cup starts. I think um, a few weeks ago, I would have said that Pakistan, yeah, they've, they've got a good chance of, of uh, doing well at the World Cup. Now I look at that team, I look at the batting order, I look at the captain, I look at the tactics, I look at the, the starting eleven and the uncertainty surrounding that, and I worry. Are Pakistan amongst the favourites at the World Cup? I don't think they are now. The confidence seems to be low, they seem to be jaded, they seem to be confused. So I think there's a lot of soul-searching, there's a lot of thinking, and there's a lot of honesty needed from these players now because otherwise it's going to be a very poor World Cup for Pakistan, which I hope isn't the case, but there has to be some sort of wake-up call and some sort of uh, revitalization of the team. I think one or two players need to be brought in uh, into the, the final squad. I've always said that Imad Basim is a match winner. I think he's somebody who can get you wickets at the start of the innings. He can get you wickets at the end of the innings and also in the middle overs. And um, I think he can get you um, quick runs as well. So I, I think that's somebody who needs to be brought into the World Cup squad. Thanks very much for watching.